Hey family, back on the line. Happy to see you all. Just wanted to give a quick update to what's been going on with your sister. Um, as many of you know, especially you guys who are my Facebook family, um, I fellowship with the Lord Jesus every morning at 5 a.m. And then I also worship, I added worship at 5 p.m. No matter how busy I am, you guys, I have to give it to him because he is worthy, okay? I, I believe I said in a video that uh, that was something that everyone should do. You know, pick a designated time to meet with the Lord daily. I'm telling you, it refreshes your soul, your spirit, and you just feel so much better after having did it. Of course, your flesh is going to rebel because it's not used to maybe getting up that early or... Uh, being that disciplined to keep that time, you know, but trust me you guys it's worth it. Okay but um I am uh, you know giving him the praise and I've been actually prepping to Go out and witness the gospel in the streets of Detroit, Michigan in a few I'm waiting on my uh, chick like pamphlets to be delivered uh, to hand out for me to witness with as well as a uh, extra tool I ordered about 200 of them. I don't usually use them. Uh, this is my first time uh, really using them, uh, handing something out to a person. I usually take names for prayer on a, uh, you know, prayer list that I carry on, on a uh, notepad, you know, and uh, just let people know, you know, that I would pray for them, you know, after we I witness with them. So um, I just take the word usually in the Holy Ghost, <laughs> but I thought I would try it, you know, with the pamphlets as well, um, you know, because people really, they like when you give them stuff. So I thought I would try it. I'll let you guys know how it works out uh, after I do it very soon. Uh, so the Lord gave me an evangelism assignment to go and witness to someone who lives in my neighborhood recently. This was a... Uh, this past Saturday and everything. Um, they, this person, she liked me and she always invited me over. I've known her for about three years. Um, I don't usually really visit over people's houses much, but I felt the Lord tell me to go and witness to the person. So I did it out of obedience. Um, we chatted and we watched a movie and we talked girl talk through the movie, I ordered pizza and everything, you know. Um, so after a while, I went into her restroom and I prayed to God to open up an opportunity for me to witness to her in conversation. And sure enough, when I came out, she brought up a conversation that was just so random about a religious book that someone was telling her about as a joke, but it really was an ABC book for kids with uh, a brownies recipe that the person uh, whom she was speaking with referred to as a religious book. They were going off into a rant and they called that a religious book. Um, it was so ridiculously random and not funny <laughs> of a, a conversation that I automatically knew that that was my cue to just jump in there, you know, and trust me, when I did that, she cut me off saying that she doesn't talk about religion because she believes in the ancestors and the Indian way. Um, but then in the next breath, she said that she was a Christian because uh, she said she was Catholic. She said, I'm Christian because I'm Catholic. So, of course, I had to tell her that the Catholic religion was not of Christ for so many reasons. You know, do your research, such as they worship and call the Pope the Christ on earth, old vice vicar, and they also worship Mary and, the, and dead so-called saints. You know, that she, she even went on to say that Mary uh, is an angel now in heaven. You know, when I told her, you don't supposed to worship Mary, she said, well, yes, we do, because she's an angel now in heaven uh, after her death. I asked her, I said, well, OK, where is that in the Bible? And she said that, uh, you know, she went blank, actually. She couldn't tell me where it was in the Bible because we know the truth. 
you know, uh, she said that she had seven Bibles. And I asked her if she had read any of them. And she said no. She said it a couple times. You know, so I'm trying to educate her, you know, uh, on this. And <laughs> she, you know, was just like so so much into saying that uh you know her way was the right way and uh i told her i said well listen i said they don't even allow you guys to read you know your bible you have a totally different bible one in the catholic religion and two they don't allow their people to read the bible and she said yeah you're right they read it to us in latin you know because she was kind of going off saying the bible had been translated so many times and you know this and that and i had to say to her you know well one how do you know what's in it if you've never read it and two uh if god is god and he is uh is if he created all of the heavens all of the earth and everything in it i think he's powerful enough to keep his word intact for his people um, we also, you know, other than the Bible, we have the Holy Ghost whose uh, job it is to educate us and to, you know, teach us. So it's not like we're just winging it off of, you know, hearsay. The word of God is alive. Hebrews 4 verse 12, you know, is sharp. I mean, this is a, a living, you know, word of God. So... Uh, I'm going to believe God, <laughs> you know, you can't, you know, I can't be in a religion. They're telling me, oh, you can't read the Bible. We'll read it to you. Don't worry about it. We'll read it to you. Uh, we're going to read it in Latin, though, <laughs> you know, and I also saw a YouTube video of them translating in a service, uh, some sort of mass or something at a Catholic church where they were translating what uh, the priest was saying. And he was saying like stuff like hail Satan. You know, you if you don't know what they're saying, how can you, you know, uh, go along to get along with that? How can you do that? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> that's why the Bible, you know, tells us not to be speaking in tongues, you know, in front of people without an interpreter. You can't do that. You know, you God is not the author of confusion. Okay. So um, anyway, I was telling her the importance of accepting the Jesus of the Bible when all of a sudden we were interrupted by a spirit speaking to her. Uh, she told me, you know, like, wait a minute. As I was in the middle of speaking, she said, wait a minute. I'm, I'm hearing something. I'm receiving a message. She said she believed it was from her uncle, but the entity was speaking in French. And I believed her because I saw a head shadow on her wall uh, behind her shortly after she began lighting some candles. Uh, she described to me how she lights candles and, and lights a certain crystal candle holder and prays 10 times saying, bless a person's name over and over 10 times. I told her that's witchcraft. <laughs> you know, being a former witch, I can tell you when you, you know, invoke and, and, you know, have these candles and you're saying like this incantations, that's what that is. She said that's how they do it in the Catholic religion. Well, <laughs> no surprise there because they have a lot of pagan roots and practices in the Catholic religion. So I wasn't surprised by that, <laughs> you know, um, you know, when they want to pray for someone, she said, who has done them wrong. Now, I'm just kind of like, that was kind of random. You know, why would you light some, start lighting some candles and talking about this is what I do, you know, uh, when people do me wrong. She said that she, I said, well, why do you have to pray into the candle? Why can't you just pray to God, you know, uh, you know, and she said, because she have a problem focusing, don't know where to look, <laughs> you know, okay. You know, I told her, I said, well. You know, I can understand that, you know, sometimes, you know, in past times, I've had the same problem. So what I do is I envision Jesus on the throne to be my focal point, you know. So I tried to relate and understand that portion with her. But the rest of that, all that candle burning and incantations. Mm -mm. Uh, but anyway, when she lit them candles, that's when I saw the shadow of a head on, on the wall for a split second. 
And I believe she invoked a spirit or something because she was trying to, to divert what I was saying. And in the end, she said that she was not going to change, you know, which it didn't shock me or, or nor did it disappoint me because see, I knew that I was sent to be a witness and that it was all being recorded in heaven for her for judgment day. See, it will be played back that Jesus sent someone to her and she actually rejected them. So anyway, uh, she blew out the candles. We finished our conversation. Um, I listened to her and one valid point she, she had was that there was a so-called Christian man with a family that she knew in our complex who always was putting people down and always being mean-spirited, showing no love, you know, who lived in our complex. And she felt that real Christians ought not be that way. And it had deterred her from even wanting to see a Christian coming, she said, you know. She said that she, look, she looks at a person's actions rather than what they say. And that's true. You know, people check fruit. So I felt bad that she had that experience, you know, and it happens. You know, I've known her for about three years and everything. And uh, she had been watching me that long and must have felt something for me to always want me to come hang out with her. Um, but at the same time, I really believe that it was the Lord that put that like in her heart for me to draw me to witness to her. Uh, here it is now three years later uh, for that particular purpose, even though when I was witnessing to her, she was livid and I felt like she wanted to kick me out of her house for to say get out <laughs> you know <laughs> you know we would do it we'd be like get out you know but she did it you know that was the lord but um she got back uh you know uh she got me back though because uh when i got home i went and i went to bed the next morning when i was sleeping i was taking a nap i got sleep paralysis and they usually call that a witch riding your back. And I was in uh, a dream where demons in the form of men were chasing me, trying to kill me. And I couldn't wake up. And when I did, I knew that I had been under spiritual attack because I know what that feels like. Because I was attacked heavily when I was trying to get saved and come to Christ years ago. So I know the difference between a regular dream and a dream where... Uh, I'm under demonic attack and I believe that was the consequence for trying to witness to her you know but oh well that's the job you know they can't kill me I still have evangelism work for the Lord to do all they can do is try to scare me and make mischief in my life but as long as I stand on God's word and keep being led by his Holy Spirit I'm good you know, it wouldn't matter if they kill me anyway, because I know where I'm going. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> you know, whatever. But I know I have work to do. So I'm just looking up for my redemption to draw an eye and, you know, hoping that the Lord, you know, does choose me. You know, because like the Bible say, many are called, but few are chosen. Not all are called and not a lot are chosen. So um, I just... I'm not sitting here before you as a person that just, I just know, you know, I got everything together and I'm going and, you know, you need to get like me. No, you need to get like Christ, you know, and that's why the Bible say, work out your own soul and salvation with fear and trembling. You know, I pray that he, you know, uh, allows me into those gates. Um, I'm definitely hopeful, you know. I'm a believer wholeheartedly that if I do his will and, you know, remain in him and in close relationship with him, uh, like I have been, I'm going to be okay. And you too, <laughs> you know, get close with him. I, what I can't understand or feel is that when people uh, out here, they say they're Christian and they're doing what they want to do. And they have no relationship with God, you know, just because they go to church on Sunday. It's like they don't talk to him. They don't worship him. They don't like love on him. I don't 
you know, understand how you could say you have a relationship with somebody that's like saying, yeah, you know, that's my boyfriend, but you don't go out, you don't, you know, hug, you don't talk, <laughs> spend time. How is that your boyfriend? <laughs> you know, how is Jesus? That's why Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, why is it that you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I say? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just, you know, trying my best, working out my soul and salvation every day, you guys. So, you know, that's just what it takes. Spending time with him, reading his word, obeying his word, you know, and just seeking to please him and get him glory, you know. But anyway, um, I laughed it off, you know, uh, and, and I, I just said, look how petty these devils are, you know. But I knew, you know, she was a high ranking witch that they could not afford to lose. You know, they were upset. They had already lost me years ago, you know, so I expected retaliation from them. They petty. <laughs> but the bottom line is, beloved, is that we have to watch our fruit. You know, because the unbelievers are watching. You know, I pray for us daily. Please keep me lifted up as well in your nightly and daily prayers too, okay? So with that being said, I love you all with the love of the Lord. And you all have a blessed and wonderful day. I'll talk with you soon. Bye for now. Your sister Troop Seeker, out.